Hello everyone and welcome to Sunburn Albino's final thoughts on Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. It's been like a couple weeks since it's been... When did it come out? It came out like the... Oh no, it's been like a month, huh? Yeah, it's been a month, even more than a month. But so plenty of time to articulate some final thoughts, wouldn't you say? This is uh, gonna be like mostly unscripted, but I do have a couple things written down here. Well, I have talking points and I have some things that are like fully written out because I gotta get them across in an accurate and meaningful way. First thing to say about Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is that it is the ultimate Smash game. All the characters, most of the stages, most expansive single-player best Smash game ever played. My personal opinion. If you're a melee purist, Smash Ultimate is the game that will come the closest to making you branch out. It's got combos. It's got effective edge-guarding tactics. It's not floaty overall. And tournament level play is goddamn exciting to watch. I don't believe that subsequent games need to recapture melee by any means, although to most people, recapturing melee literally just means sh make sure there's combos and the gravity is turned on. But Smash Ultimate is the fast paced fun of melee with all the polish and bells and whistles and insane amount of content of a modern Smash experience. World of Light, the single player, uh, big giant single player thing, is eventually engrossing, and spirits are eventually addicting. So World of Light, when you first started off, it seems massive. Uh, it is more massive than it seems. Uh, there were like two different times where I was like, okay, as soon as I beat this, it's over. And then, oh no, you, I just unlocked this whole other part that's as big as the first part. There's like three different giant worlds. And like over six, I think there's like over 600 spirit like battle encounters in it which is an insane amount. Uh, I say eventually engrossing, because at first I was like, oh my god, this is so long. I can't do this anymore, it's so long. And then I got more into it, and as, as I became more of like a spirit collector, I was like, oh, this is so long and it's great. I'm glad it's long. I want to collect all these spirits, which even, you know, there's like 1,200 or so spirits, even, you know, a month later, and like a, a month of like aggressively collecting them. Well, you know, somewhat, somewhat aggressively collecting them. I have like 750. So I got a ways to go. There's tons of spirits from all of Nintendo's games and also like third properties and a bunch of stuff I never heard of, but they're all fun to collect. And, and like, especially getting legend class spirits, like the highest level ones. Oh, it's so good. There's like a, there's a whole thing behind that. Like, that's very nice. Like, spirits themselves, like, you know, they don't affect, it's a, it's purely a single player thing. You can take spirits online, there's like a spirit mode that you can turn on where you want to play online with your spirit teams. I don't know that anyone's going to do that because I don't want them to, or I wouldn't want myself to. Like, you know, online is online. The single player is single player, you separate these things. And like World of Light has this skill tree thing where as you get skill spheres, you can spend them on upgrades, like, oh, faster final smashes or stronger air attacks. And there's ones that are like, oh, get an extra double jump, get a double final smash. And it's like, you don't want to get used to playing that way because it's going to ruin your online stuff. So that's fun as like a frills single player thing, but I try to keep it pure in terms of trying not to corrupt my online play, like multiplayer stuff. Uh, the new characters are overall very properly integrated, and they feel at home, you know? That doesn't mean I like all of them, like, you know, they're not all my playstyle. Simon and Richter, like, they just have terrible recovery, and I hate projectiles, so that's not for me. Uh, they have insane range, though, especially on that forward smash. Uh, Incineroar, I really wanted to like Incineroar, but he's, like, the slowest character in the game. He's slower than Bowser. Well, Bowser's fast now, so that's not even, like, a real... Thing to say, but he's the slowest character in the game, and you know, he's strong, but like, he doesn't have much to do, and like, nobody's good with him. Like, there aren't any pro Incineroar players. Well, there are, but like, they're not as good as pro other people players. Uh, Krom is like top tier, so you know, he's good. Krom is like, you know, try hard character. I, I main Krom a little bit. And he's, he's too good, actually. He's kind of like, like, you don't think he would be good if you don't know anything about him. Like, just coming into Smash Ultimate. He's like, oh, Krom, what is he, a Lucina friggin', you know, Echo Fighter? But, it, and isn't he? Like, he's an, he's somebody's Echo, or is he Roy's Echo Fighter? But, like, he's way better than Roy, so. But yeah, Krom is, like, the best of both worlds of, like, Ike and Roy and Lucina, all that, all that stuff. He's, like, the best swordsman. So he's super good. He's super fast. And uh, everybody's using him now, and it's kind of annoying, <laughs> but 
I use him too, so what am I gonna say? Uh, and then there's Inkling, who is literally the best character in the game, and most people don't dispute that. Inkling is too good, way too good. There's, the, it's flooded with Inklings in the multiplayer sphere. You're gonna find like nonstop of them. Uh, same with King K. Rule, except King K. Rule has like a lower skill cap. So like, King K. Rule's a great noob killer, but if you if you get in like the top tier kind of play, like you know he's not he's not gonna be that much of a threat. He has he has his weaknesses. Um, I don't play professionally, but I see it, so I can comment on it from that perspective. I love Isabel. I don't, I'm not good with her, but I love her as a villager echo fighter, essentially. But, like, she's also different. She's really different, and she's great. Isabel is cute. She belongs in Smash. She's also so annoying. Like, you know, trap-based, just, like, gimmicky. But, you know, Daisy is... Daisy doesn't need to exist. I love Daisy. I like Daisy more than Peach, but Daisy should have been her own fighting style. Should have been, like, a scrappier, like, more sports woman-like person. Like, not... Don't be Peach's Echo Fighter. Be your own thing. Like, Rosalina's not Peach's Echo Fighter. She got her own thing going on. Daisy needs her own thing going on. Disappointed in Daisy as a Peach Echo Fighter. Uh, and then there's Ridley, which I don't like Ridley at all. I, I don't. I don't like him... People are succeeding with him, but I don't like him. I also hate Ken, because Ken has, like, negative range. Him and Ryu, they just, their hitboxes are inside their own bodies, and I can't hit anybody with them. But, you know, obviously that's not an objective stance to take on any of these characters, so your mileage may vary, but this is just my thing. Uh, as far as lag goes... Lag is only an issue online when people have garbage connections. In the very beginning, like at launch, there was some lag. Uh, it's mostly gone away, but if your person that you're playing with has a terrible connection, you will know it, that's for sure, but like that's their fault. It's not that the servers are bad, it's that individuals just bring lag with them like emotional baggage. There's some people in like my friend's arena group that like whenever they come I'm like, oh great, here comes the lag, and they bring it non-stop. It's like a guy who just learned guitar. They just don't leave that thing behind no matter where they're going. It's going with them. They got the case hoisted up on their shoulder. Where they go, the lag goes. That's, that's what we're getting across here. So, uh, quick play online is engaging and terrifying. I frequently, you know, I had my series I was doing for like five episodes. And like, I, I want to keep doing it, but I'm... Tss, I, it's so hard to just like jump out and just play 1v1 online with random people because you could get demolished, you know? And you know, that's a real fear and I don't like getting demolished. But like, even when I win, it like, it just, it's too nerve wracking. Like I can't take the stress. It's like playing Overcooked 2 or something like that. But yeah, the preferred rules will almost all be met, always be met now. In the beginning, you would like set your preferred rules and then the game would ignore them and you know, give you like stock, percentage, timed, battles, stamina, items, like all that, and like four player. Uh, but now, you know, if you set your preferred single rule, which is like three stocks, seven minutes, 1v1, that's like professional rules, I guess. Uh, that's usually what you will get. In fact, since the patch, I haven't gotten not my rules ever, and I've done it like probably 40 or 50 times. So that's good, they're being very good about it now. Uh, battle arenas online with friends are the heart and soul of this game. That is where the fun is. It's so good. Oh, so good. Invite people online, make an arena of like eight people or six people or however many, you know, they rotate in and out. There's problems with it, I'll get to that later, but like, overall battle arena is so fun, so much fun. I love those. I'm in those all the time. I just don't like playing online with strangers. But I, it's like if I know the person, I'm like, ooh, haha, -ha, I can like get in voice chat and just dunk on them. But yeah. Um, oh yeah, okay, so the problems, I wrote that after this. Uh, battle arenas have a queuing system that kicks you out if you've been winning but want to select a new character. So anytime you want to select a new character, you take yourself out of line to do that. Even if you, like, won the last match, even if you're in the ring, or even if you're just queuing up and you're, like, next in line for the next match, if you go to select a new character, you immediately go to the back of the line, and I don't like that. I don't like that in the slightest. I think if you're, you know, just don't kick me out when I'm trying to select my new character. It doesn't take that long to select a new character if you know what you're up to. It's not like you're interrupting everyone. You don't need to take yourself out of play to do like six seconds of, oh, let me move my cursor from here three spaces to the right. 
You know, so that's that sucks. And it, it, what it does is it encourages me and everybody I play with to just play random so we don't lose our slot. And we like playing random anyway because it's fun. And uh, it's also, and it's like fair and it's like a mixed bag and like you get a bunch, you know, you get a lot of character experience that way. But yeah, it's really dumb that it does that, I think. Also, if you're selecting a character when a match you're not in starts, you're not, you can't spectate it. You can, you can't spectate matches in the middle. Why not? It's like when you're spectating a match, the game puts you in the same online space with the people that are playing the match. And like, so like if some, I don't know, would that ruin the match if like another person just like kind of joined and spectated in the middle of the match? Would that make the connection go haywire? I, I don't know, but like, you know, you're gonna miss spectating if you're choosing your character. Like it seems like just, like just choosing your character in a battle arena is such a, has so many conditions to it. So it's like, it's bad. It's, it's bad and I don't like that it does that. Um beyond that. Uh, spirit teams don't let you assign specific fighters to them. That's borderline unthinkable. It, like, if you have an energy shot-centered spirit team that would be perfect for, say, Samus. Yeah, I said Samus again. You're not gonna change me. But you usually play as someone else during other situations. You have to manually select Samus every time you use that team. It's pretty obvious that some teams benefit specific fighters and not others. I mean, there are even spirits that increase Lucario's aura power. That is good for literally only Lucario, but you can't assign Lucario to a team like that. You would have to select him every time. It's incredibly annoying, and for me, it even goes so far as to discourage experimentation. So that needs to be fixed ASAP. You need, if you make a spirit team, you gotta be able to make a fighter and like save that fighter to that team so it's always that fighter when you select that team. That, that's so basic. I don't know why it's not a part of it. Uh, spirit points are kind of hard to get when you've already finished World of Light. Like, you can go on an expedition, but that takes like two hours and gives you an average of a, like 800. And you need more than that just to level up one person to 99 with snacks. So it's a slow grind on the spirit board, especially when you don't have any duplicate spirits to dismiss and you're trying to collect them all. So spirit points are like too rare. There, I've got a lot of enhanceable spirits I would love to feed snacks to, but feeding snacks to your spirits costs spirit points, which is also stupid, I think. Like, you already bought the snacks with spirit points. Why do you have to spend more spirit points to feed them the snacks? This is an unsustainable economy. Uh, PSA, by the way, spend gold at the in-game shop in the vault. Go to the main menu, go to the vault, Go to the shop icon, spend gold on random shit to unlock all the slots, then visit it every day. It sells super valuable stuff, from large snacks to shield spacers and slowers for the spirit board, even legend class spirits. You probably have like infinite gold if you finish World of Light, so just splurge your ass off every day on stuff you need. I didn't know this shop existed for like a week and a half because it's tucked away where it is. Again, go to the vault and then the shop is right there. And, you know, do all the slots, do it all. It also sells music and meager, but, like, it's so valuable. It, the stuff resets every day, and it, sell, it sells, you know, I've got, like, 105 large snacks now, because I just bought them. They're 750 gold each, and you have, like, 300,000 gold from World of Light, so you just you just buy in bulk, man, because the inventory is different every day. But, uh, yeah. Um, okay, so one of the other, like, controversies of the game was the fact that you had to unlock all the characters. I don't think unlocking characters is a pain. It was fun. Like, even pre-patch when the challenger encounters were, like, level 9 CPUs half the time, building your roster is a joy, and when you get everyone unlocked, you have a sense of pride and accomplishment you couldn't earn if they were just given to you from the outset. Just make sure whatever activity you're doing, especially if it's World of Light or online, you hold B and back out to the main menu every 5 or 10 minutes to trigger an approaching challenger, because otherwise you can spend 4 straight hours in World of Light and only come back to one challenger. In World of Light, I could fight about 3 or 4 spirit encounters and then back out and reliably get a challenger every time that way. So that was nice. So um, that's about it, you know, overall, Smash Ultimate, it's the best Smash game. It's the best Smash game I played. I didn't play Smash 4 because I never had a Wii U. I played a little bit of Brawl, like I played Subspace Emissary, which that was fun, but it wasn't, you know, people like kind of herald that, and I'm not sure it was that heraldable, or it's like, you know, I think World of Light is a worthy replacement for Subspace Emissary. I don't even know what Smash 4 did for its single player. But 
yeah, me and Stolt, it's on the Switch. It's gonna be the ultimate Smash. It's gonna be the premier Smash for years to come. So get used to it, because it ain't going anywhere for a while. You know, whereas, like, Smash 4 is gonna be defunct now, I think. With Smash Ultimate, have, like, who's gonna still play Smash 4? Who's like, you know what, I think Smash 4 is better than Smash Ultimate. No, it ain't. Smash Ultimate has everything. I, like I said, I never played Smash 4, so what would I know? Well, just... It, it, Smash 4 is just a less version of Smash Ultimate. Smash Ultimate brought back all the old characters that were not in the other stuff. Wolf is back. You know, Mewtwo is back, even though he was DLC in the last one. But, like, you know, he's, like, back back now. Same with Ice Climbers. You know, all the characters that they got rid of, they bringing them back. And just all the stages, like, they really went all out to make this game the game. And they have succeeded in my mind. There's just like the three or four things that I mentioned before. There's like, hey, if you fix those, you got yourself a perfect game on your hands. So if you want to go for that, that would be amazing. But, you know, okay. So that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at sunburnedalbino. And uh, check out my Smash Waifu ranking if you are into something freaky. And I will see you guys next time.